Probably one of the creepiest abandoned houses I think I've ever been to. And I'm not excited. It's gonna be an interesting night, that's for sure. Let's see if I can pull this one off. So finally just got inside here. And it is there's a lot more brush than I remember. I am soaked. And it looks like this is a nice photo of some ducks or something. Hello? Hello? The mouse that just moved under that box it startled me. And there's, I think, a photo of the mother or one of the daughters. There's mice darting around everywhere here. No stove, but the fridge is still here. I believe there's nothing. Ducks. Maybe they farmed them, I don't know. And then there's all these cassettes that Gordon had that he recorded. But they have very um, very obscure names. Found on Highway 55 or found on Highway 56. Random things like that. And another thing to note while you're watching this is just how many beds, like this one in their main kitchen, are in the house, which is very peculiar for the last owner who lived supposedly alone. This might be one of Gordon's scrapbooks here. It's very weird objects, like this is a, a pen he put in laminate. This house membership card. Some hand. Oh, Hello? various cutouts from inserts and magazines and such. <laughs> this one looks like it was just like letters and cards maybe. Christmas blessings to you. The history of this location is actually quite peculiar in the sense that there's a lot of controversy as to who the family members that lived here were and exactly what they did. For sure we know that there was a mother, a father, 
and then there was supposedly four siblings. The father died at an early age, and the mother lived on to be about 104. And she raised two sons, Arthur and Gordon, and two daughters. I believe one of them was named Dina. The other is the reason why this house is so strange, because um, she disappeared from all family records at a very young age, and there's only a few photos in this house that have her in it. And there's very little mention in any of Gordon's records, or uh, cassettes, or anything of this um, second sibling, so I'm guessing she either passed away or went missing at a very young age. This family's story is definitely a strange one, and tonight I'm going to try and show you guys as much as I can, and we're going to listen to some cassettes, and just try and figure out exactly what went on here. This must have been some photos of the family, perhaps. It's like a little cubby. They had some medicine here last time, like some Advil, so I'm guessing this was like a little pantry. Looks like it would have been their sunroom here, and I gotta be careful with my light because it looks right out onto the road. This is Gordon's scrapbook. Lola Jackson and Gordon thinking about some fun. This looks like it was a photo of the two sisters. It's very hard to see. Oh, here's a photo of all four of them. It's probably one of the last photos ever taken. Or one of the few photos taken with all of them. Sad to see that it looks like a little more destroyed than last time. Here's a letter he would write to news telecasters. So he idolized these ladies who would um, go on TV and talk about the news. And they would write them letters and they'd write them back, but he like obsessed with them. He would also collect their birthdays and information about their birthdays. And he has them all written down in a list here. Here's another letter from the news telecaster. Dear Gordon, thank you for your kind letter of June 9th. I really appreciated it. This was 1976. This room always creeps me out. This was like their sunroom. They turned it into like a makeshift bedroom for someone. This looks like one of many photos that Gordon had of animals he'd killed Connections through wires. 
Old projector slides. You can see this one's like looks like it's of the moon. It's hard to see. That one looks like it's someone standing in the grass. They're just everywhere. That one just looks blank. I have been back in our woods with Ella and my sister about 1949. So it's been like a room between the sunroom and the living room here. As you can see, here's more of these collages that Gordon has made of animals he's killed and mutilated here. Also a lot of reel-to-reel -reel, uh, tapes here. I wish I had a player that could play all these. Where the upstairs bedrooms are, there's a this door closes here. And it doesn't really have much functionality. There's no reason to have a a door that looks like it would have locked in the way of the stairwell here. First time at this house is this dresser would have been covered with books and uh, toys and other various objects but if you look behind it here push this out of the way it's actually blocking an entrance to an unfinished attic and on the other side of that attic right there where you see that pink open door that's actually a secluded kids room and that ladies and gentlemen is where i'm going to be sleeping tonight the last time i was here there was a raccoon staying in this attic so i'm hoping that he's gone now and that i don't have to worry about him but oh, let's press on i don't want to stand on anything other than these supports Nice little nail there, I don't know if you can see that. And the last time I came here, there was actually a latch right there so they could lock it from the outside and actually put someone in here. And this little cot, looks like it's gonna be my bed. And oh, it looks like there used to be a shelf in the back corner. Somebody took that out. But yeah, this is, uh my comfy abode for the night. Oh, this is cozy. Oh, I keep seeing like shadows through that little door of my flashlight, the way it reflects off my arm and it's not the best thing to see in the world. Look at that, perfect size. Oh, take off this jacket, this rain jacket got soaked. I might just hang it over my bag for tonight. All right, so now that we've got our bed set up, can explore the rest of the upstairs here. the piping that would have drew heat all throughout the house during the winter. This is one of the 
bedrooms here. It's weird. Here's more of the animal art. It looks like a skewered raccoon that he trapped and killed. Various cassettes. Corsair Avenger Wingwalk Files. Hurricane Down. Lane Crash Black Box. Various different names. Old oh, slipper. And oh, look at that. That would have been a phone right above their bed there. Okay. Uh, so then there's just one person, you don't do any grocery shopping then for a family then, eh? No, I buy some groceries myself. Yeah, but it's for one person, eh? Yes. Oh, okay, sorry to trouble you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. I should mention that this is a Monday night, I'm sure, the time is approximately 7 p.m. Monday night, January 22nd, 1995. Moving into the next room here. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's vintage clothing and dresses. Looks like whoever lived in this room was very into fashion. Perhaps maybe the eldest sister. This TV. This Thompson advises. Man takes wife for granted. So maybe some old photos and new projector slides. room here. There's just a couple of chairs and it looks like a lot of letters here. Asleep. Science units. It looks like this was like all their homework and stuff. place for the chickens fixed up for you. This lady this was talking about the farm. Interesting. This looks like it would have been their living room. It has a nice piano. And some more photos of the family. Here's a certificate for being a member of a uh, leader of the opposition in Ottawa for 90 years. of 
the U.S. air flight had little warning of any problems and never knew just what went wrong. The flight data recorder shows the plane rolled left and spiraled nose first into the ground. The first hint of trouble came 25 seconds before impact. Unexplained noises on the cockpit voice recorder. Three clicks. The chief pilot says, jeez. Then additional noises, thumps, and more clicks. As the plane starts to roll, the pilot says, hang on, hang on. Then, what the hell is this? As the jet begins to shake violently, the pilot says, oh God, oh God. The plane is now nose down as the pilot shouts to the first officer, pull, pull. There is screaming. Then the final words, the first officer yells, no. Hello? Can you take off my headphones? I keep hearing something coming from my... In here, I really hope it's not that raccoon. So this would have been the parents' room in here. And I can't really walk in here because it's kind of cluttered and it, the bed just barely fits the room. As you can see they had all kinds of religious plaques and such up on their bed about all mothers. Some mothers are talented, industrious too, and some are great fun, whatever they do. It's like a little poem. That one says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, or iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And there's a Moody Bible Institution of Chicago certificate. Coming to the last room on the main floor here would have been the bathroom. And this is actually the only washroom in this whole entire house. And it looks like, I've seen this writing on the exterior and interiors and the barns and such. Uh, Gordon would like to paint um, instructions and stuff that he did and document stuff uh, in this fashion, in this all caps font on the walls and uh, various parts of his property. The entrance to the basement. Look at how steep. <laughs> these stairs are. I don't think I'll head down this way because I think there's another way around back. These steps don't look the most stable. It looks like they collapsed over the years. I hope we'll be able to get down here because it looks buried. Oh. Hope we don't find a body down here. The underneath the foundations of the home. It looks fairly empty, which is a disappointment. Oh my god, there's something living in that pipe. I was just packing up my headphones. The pipes just began to shake and <laughs> it's like something was scurrying around in there. All right, let's get out of here. Back into my home sweet home. And I think with that, Hope I don't need to jump up in the middle of the night. I might crank my head off this probably like two foot high ceiling. Despite the fact that a little girl slept in this room and was probably mortified by her confined living quarters, it's actually a pretty comfortable place to sleep. I'd say this is 
probably the most comfortable bed we've seen on a loan yet. And good back support. Just hope I don't roll over too much or I might fall off the cot here. Yeah, anyways, I think I've done enough for tonight. I'm exhausted. And I'll see you guys in the morning. I don't know if it's just the storm, because it's picked up a lot, I don't know if you can hear, but um, there's like a loud banging sound downstairs. I don't know if a draft got in or not, but uh, I might have to go check it out. I don't know. It's really hard to sleep in this house. <sighs> Hearing something running around out here. I I might take a look. There's nothing. I don't know what it is. It sounds like it's scurrying. So it looks like I'm gonna have to close this door for tonight. I don't want black moon visitors during the night, so I'm gonna try and seal myself. If only the outside lock was still working, I could lock myself in here and just have a nice peaceful sleep, you know? This house just doesn't want to give me that. You see, the worst part about these alones is not actually going to these places and not like, like I have no problem exploring the creepiest depths of these each of these places. Like tunnels, no problem. Creepy basements, no problem. Midnight, no problem. 3 a.m., I have no problem walking around. It's just when you try to go to sleep, that's the worst. A, because the sleeping conditions are usually pretty, pretty poor. Um... <laughs> And B, because when you're not focusing on taking a video or filming, that's when your mind starts to wander. Like, oh, right now I'm trying to focus on like sleeping, but like as you lay down, as you sleep, you have a tendency to like just let your mind wander. And you have to have such like a high discipline to keep your mind in like a sane state so you don't start seeing things or don't let your mind start playing tricks on you. Oh my God. 30 minutes because this storm is picking up and like you don't even understand it's just, just like echoing off this chamber oh my god you guys can't see this right now oh Hello? What? Okay, so this was that bang you just heard. Do you know that shelf that was sitting right here that I pushed out of the way that was blocking the entrance to this attic? It just almost took a tumble down the stairs <laughs> and it scared the life out of me how the hell did this thing fall i thought i gave it enough space on the ledge where it wouldn't have fallen over and i'm keeping this light on at all times because in case of an emergency where i need to get out i have to be able to see and grab my gear but there's no quit in this man I will stay the night here, even if it kills me. So we made it till morning. And um, this is my breakfast. It's about 6.40 right now, so we missed sunrise, unfortunately. Almost had a heart attack when that uh, the shelving unit fell down and made that loud thud. And the storm let up around 4 a.m., and then that's when I got... A decent, well not a decent sleep, but an okay sleep. If the coyote night was a 8, this was probably a 6.5. I don't know if you can see, but this cot couldn't bear my weight and kind of ripped a little bit. Which I wasn't too happy about. Because uh, I was, so I was pretty much had my back on the floor for a good portion of it. 
and I'm kind of upset that I broke the cot, I feel bad, but I mean, I probably shouldn't have slept on it in the first place, that was my fault, but yeah, I have a nice healthy breakfast of Nutrigrain bar and Welch's fruit snacks, and I just honestly can't wait to get out of this house. <laughs> As the storm cleared and the sun rose, I had survived another night. It was definitely not the easiest of challenges I'd ever tackled, but I could hold my head high and proudly say that through hell and high water, I came out on top. Thank you for watching.